If your communication hasn't changed, you haven't changed. Doesn't matter what you think about how you know, wonderful change or insight you had or realization or meditation or whatever. If your communication hasn't changed, you may have had a great epiphany or insight or meditation, but it hasn't integrated, it hasn't embodied. So if your communication hasn't changed, you haven't changed. The most effective communication, I believe, doesn't have any you in it. It's just it. And then we watch how we add whatever we add. So I'm going to assert that if not the most, one of the most important and, and, and uh, blanket, like the biggest space that all your honor shows up is in communication. I could make a case for that's probably the biggest place where it arises or doesn't or is missing. And I'm talking about even, I'm coaching a person, he was just, he's a really good guy with good values and this and that, and travels into business men. And I just said, what it, we were looking at what it was, oh, even when somebody gives him, he gives a tip, he says, thank you. He said, what if you, but what is it to actually honor them? And he just changed by stopping looking at them and really honoring and being really thankful. He, I can't believe how lit up people get. <laughs> Instead of just, oh, I'm good, but here, thank you, tip, like all above board, all like above average, but not honoring them. You know, being polite and do, do you guys see what I mean? So, a cool thing happens, or at least has happened with me and the people that I've done this specific work with, is you start to have a, they've all had a very powerful, I did, and they did have a powerful shift in life simply by managing how they communicated. Tell you about really being thoughtful about what is it I'm about to say? What do I want to get across? What do I need? I've had people multiply their effectiveness in management by saying, telling people, okay, if you're going to come to me with an issue, before you do, it has, make sure these three things are answered. You know, what is, what is the issue? You know, what is the impact of it? What, is, uh, what are my top three suggestions and how to handle it? You know, or whatever, like, well, we'll come up with a set. And, and you could you not imagine how much everything shifts because they have to come through an intentionally thought out communication before they can come and talk. And 90% of the time, they have their own answers. <laughs> so I just, 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 and consider that these next few days is an opportunity to practice. I, here you have like no consequence, no downside. You have an opportunity to just actually practice being really present, just having honoring yourself, honoring us, really thinking through, having a profound regard for communication. Which actually is having a profound regard, honoring yourself and honoring us, those who are listening. That's what it, that another, you know, try to translate into. Anything you want to add? I'm curious if you guys... First of all, get that communication is super influential and crucial and foundational to, as a sign kind of, of your honor also. D does that make sense? Like why that's the case? Why does communication define you so much? It's an immediate extension of you, right? Your, at least your psychology, but, but also of the degree of awareness you have of your psychology. Because there might be a lot of stuff that's going on in your psychology. It doesn't mean all of it needs to get communicated. Right? So someone can have a pure psychology, relatively speaking, not have a lot of awareness or control over mm. the difference between their psychology and what gets out there, communication. Whereas someone can have a very troublesome psychology, but have a great degree of awareness of it and a great amount of honor, at least to the degree that it's possible for them of what they choose to communicate and why and how present they are to it. So, so psychology and communication doesn't equal each other, but it does if you incorporate the element of having awareness of your psychology. What is relevant? Why am I sharing this? Where am I coming from? So it's a real indicator of both your psychology, but also your level of awareness and presence and intentionality with your communication. So for me, when it comes to um, let's say, quote unquote, hiring people or letting people 
be more part of the inner circle and work with us uh, towards the same mission. Communication is probably 70 to 80 percent of what I use to gauge uh, the, the resonance of that person, the f fitness, the readiness of that person to our team, to our level of standards of honor and integrity and so forth. I'd say about 70 to 80 percent of the determining factor, or at least a revealing factor, right? It's, the, it's what exposes where a person is at. So not to scare you like, oh, now I'm going to shut up, because that's communication too, and I'll notice that as well. So <laughs> don't worry. There's nothing you can do to hide where you're at. <laughs> All you can do if you want to improve your game is actually improve your game, not fake your game, right? So just as a very simple formula maybe to remember, this applies to everything that you're doing, this kind of self-work or non-self-work. <laughs> If your communication hasn't changed, you haven't changed. Doesn't matter what you think about how you know, wonderful change or insight you had or realization or meditation or whatever. If your communication hasn't changed, you may have had a great epiphany or insight or meditation, but it hasn't integrated, it hasn't embodied. So if your communication hasn't changed, you haven't changed. Conversely, if you change your communication, you will most definitely change. So because it's so directly related to our psychology and our awareness of our psychology, if you don't work on yourself, but all you do is work on your communication, you will change along with that. It's a gateway into change or transformation or awareness. Would you agree? Yeah, I actually did an experiment with that, and I was shocked. Yeah. So all of these programs, I would do this and have people transform and get past certain fears. And the biggest one, like say, invalidation and looking good and all that, so I, oh, I, I took that part, and nice. I only had them slow down, and, oh, I'm saying that just for value, I'm saying that yep. just for good, and not talk that way, and then not talk that way, take that out of the communication. And after doing that for weeks, they literally stopped worrying so much about what people thought, in a way that they never even imagined possible after the workshops. Yep. Because it was the daily practice, the daily, no, and they, they could see themselves like going for that hit, or like, and then worry, and then just talking, only the communication and realizing everything was okay and then over and then over and then it was like, that actually produced more impact around yeah. the phenomena of trying uh, to, of getting, of looking good yeah. uh, than any distinction ever generated in the room. Nice. And then I realized I could literally alter people's existence simply by managing how they communicated. Yeah. I think it's the, probably the single most if you look in terms of even conventional success, if you just master your communication, uh, you're going to be able to be successful in whatever field, whatever you want to get across. Um, and, and yes, it's absolutely important how you land with others if you care about the message that you say you care about. If not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you, you can't... No, I know you do. <laughs> absolutely. I'm saying in general, we have to understand that any time we open our mouths, it has an influence, it has an effect, and we're actually, we're actually hypnotizing the people around us. It's, communication is manipulation. There's no other way around it. Unless someone's absolutely not listening. But even then you could say subliminally, they pick up on it. So literally every word that comes out of my mouth is changing the people around me. Um, it's like trance work. It's like hypnotism. There's no way around it. I'm manipulating your experience of life every time you listen to me talk. No? Mm -hmm. There is no way for me to talk without manipulating you. Now, the intention is not to manipulate you in the negative connotation, but it, that's just the physics of communication. It's constant co-manipulation. Remember, the core meaning of manipulation is not good or bad. Right. This yeah. is manipulation. I'm manipulating, mm -hmm. I'm moving, that is. Yeah. Same with the word distortion, by the way, which yeah. I use a lot. Yeah, so just, you know, you are, everything is a communication. <clears throat> and if you ask me a question, I don't respond, that's a communication. You cannot escape. You're always training the world, manipulating, you're causing, you're putting in place who you are to the world by everything you say, do. Everything's a communication. It is informing the environment around you about you. And this has perhaps been my, I don't know how to put it, not contentious, but um, 
my point of surprise or curiosity <laughs> about um, the, the people around me, like just over the trajectory, not necessarily now or whenever, but just in general, over the course of years, working with people, being close to people, I have been surprised by how pervasive the lack of awareness of why and what we communicate is. Like how long that hmm. takes people to actually hmm. catch on and make a point out of it. Yeah. You can take someone that's doing a lot of self-transformational hmm. work, um, take him four years ago and four years now, and you may see a lot of sort of psychological or spiritual transformations, but then when you look at their communication in social situations, it's pretty much the same person, 98% of it. Um, so the communication element really is where you can bring it home. And it really is proof. If you do change that, it shows that you have attained a next level of self-control in terms of honor, like making it important, right? Which leads to controlling yourself in the proper way. Nothing wrong with control, by the way, if it's applied properly, right? So control yourself when you're communicating. Be aware, in other words. Be intentional. So right? It takes so long yeah. to change that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can change everything. Change everything. Else and then, well, well, see, and one of the then, funny, one of the funny things. If your communication uh, hasn't changed, yeah. maybe yeah. you haven't changed. If, so people actually think they have, because what they do is, you know, one of the things that I think lacks honor is, you know, posting things. Oh, you know, I'm, and they're so they think they're talking because they're saying more spiritual things. Do this and let go and be at peace, but they're actually not being at peace. So. Um, <laughs> So actually, there they are, they, and they wonder why they have no credibility with their family because they're saying these things, but then when their family says this, they're still yelling and getting upset. There's no change in the communication. They're saying this, a couple of new slogans. Now, if they never said any one of those new slogans, but they no longer reacted angrily to their sister, then they would go, oh, something's changed. It's, I mean, anyway, so the, to watch... Uh, reading books and doing these things with the illusion that that's causing some change if there's actually no change and using that as a compensation for letting go what you, there is to let go of and mm -hmm. actually alter in your behavior. Yep. Also why the show, so I think that it's... Sorry, were you done with that yeah, thought? Yeah, I am, yep. yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think why this really shows if someone has really integrated it, like actually made the change, not just is aware of the change, it can talk about the change, but has become the change, is one reason is because it's easy when we are in a moment where we perceive that it matters to demonstrate that we have changed, we can. It's easy to maintain a changed state for an hour in the presence of a teacher or in the presence of some project that matters and to perform mm -hmm. at a higher level for that team meeting, um, sometimes even for the reason to show off or belong or whatever, and sometimes for genuine reasons, we're able to sort of have a peak performance, be that changed version of ourselves that we know is more aligned, that we know is more honorable. But then if we're in sort of a casual social situation, the standard drops. It doesn't seem to matter so much. Um, and sometimes that's true, maybe. Sometimes it is fun to kind of let your hair down and maybe it doesn't matter so much. However, just again, the pervasiveness of what I've witnessed that any time nobody's really watching or, or tracking you, it's easy to fall back into your old patterns, your speech patterns, your communication patterns, how much self-control you exercise, how much importance you give to each moment of your life. Um, and I'm all for casual banter every once in a while. I, I really am. Like, f just fun, you know. And fun doesn't even have to be casual. It can be very intentional, too. But sometimes it's fine. Just let your hair down, have some banter. It's, you know. We don't have to be militant about it, but the degree to which I see people, ah, when they relax, also relax their standards of honor and clarity of communication has surprised me um, how long that takes to really change. Yeah. And if you do fully change your communication, if it's always different and always at the next level of honor, then it's safe to assume you've actually made the change, your new baseline. And it's no longer context dependent. It's no longer observer dependent. You actually care about what you say, why you say it, when you say it, how much of it you say. So that's why communication is a great signifier in that sense. 
And by the way, you have to understand this. Don't mis misinterpret. Having tremendous honor in communication, honor is not serious. Honor is honor. Nice. Right? So you're having a fun time with honors the conversation. Like, somebody, people find, don't, then what dishonors the conversation is getting serious, getting, taking things personally when it's actually a fun, that's, you know, honor is honor. That's about, remember what we said yesterday? It's about being present. Not a set of rules. It's about being present. Honoring the conversation might be being very silly indeed. It's what, what's happening here, you know? What is the space? So it is, again, it's just about being present. As far as I can tell, how, you, how your presence exists in the world is through communication, verbal, written, this, action. So therefore, I, I, there may be something, but I haven't seen anything more pervasive and important than communication in how you arise. And you are creating yourself for others and for yourself, so you can, <laughs> you know, you can have every, anything is accessible through you through communication. If you're rigorous about it for 24 hours, you, you will be embarrassed. And <laughs> I didn't talk for, for days. I was yeah. like, everything that was, I, I wanted to examine everything, and I, and I couldn't come up with any reason I was speaking that wasn't just horseshit. It was so embarrassing. Yep. And what is, yeah. Yeah, once your standard has changed, <laughs> there will be a transition period of, <laughs> of embarrassment. Not to go into judgment, but it's healthy to be like, Ooh, kind of cringe, cringing at your own automatic speech patterns, and you know, but that's part of the fun. It's like, oh shit, that's how you know you're taking a leap in awareness, and then you can really up your game because now you're super aware of it. Yeah. And you do that just by questioning every single thing that comes. Like, oh, just pause yourself. You don't even always have to pause yourself. You can go with it, but then be aware of what's happening, right? Sometimes it's more effective. Sometimes it's more effective to pause before you say it. You can play around, but, but do notice when you do say something, what is the main, and you got to be radically honest, which is <laughs> difficult. You think it might be easy. You think you might want to do that, but, but there's going to be some deceit in that, self-deceit. So, but be, try to be rigorously honest, what, if I was to objectively write this down as a film scenario or whatever, what would I say is this character's motivation for saying what it just said? Just take yourself out of it. Just make it objective. Give me one good reason why you said what you just said. One, like what's the only logical belief or reason or motivating principle that generated that word or that sentence or that way of speaking? And just be honest, just observe it as it is, like a comic book, just, oh, this person says that. That was the person's motivation. And apply that to yourself. That's going to be fine. Yeah, do it on an empty <laughs> stomach. Do it on an empty <laughs> stomach. <laughs>